Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Lisa. I'm spiritual coach Lisa Hopp. It is Sunday, June 5th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're well. If you're new, please be sure to check out my website at lisahopp.com. For all about my services, all about my upcoming events, I will be adding new events and dates shortly. And all about how to schedule an appointment. And for those of you coming back every week, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for liking and sharing and subscribing. This channel is growing steadily. And I love it. I just get so excited when I see one new subscriber. I get so excited. Thank you so much. Um, it's the little engine that could, I guess, right? <laughs> And thank you as well to those who have liked and subscribed to The Guided Journey, my other YouTube channel. I will be adding very shortly uh, some new videos on there. I, um, why well, didn't I the other day? I think it was just didn't have the recording noise level. There was something that wasn't... Um, because I missed, I missed a deadline. I, mean, I should have recorded something by June 1st, but I missed it. Um, I think it was just stormy conditions or something. There was something that stopped me from doing it, but that'll be up shortly as well. And coming soon, the Haunted Suitcase YouTube channel, um, when I have the opportunity to travel. There are some, There is some travel booked in the future. Uh, it's just about getting out there soon and doing that first video and I'll let you know when that's up and running as well there's another YouTube channel too <laughs> there's such a YouTube channel I'm getting emails from people saying I notice you love YouTube can I help you <laughs> um it's a manifestation site and I will let you know about that as well it's just specifically for the law of attraction it doesn't won't have a mix about it and so I'll announce that shortly as well I have to get some videos on that as well I do this by the way this is my hobby this is but it's also my way of serving when I say it's my hobby I do it outside of my normal work and so that's why sometimes it can have delays because I do it on, for instance, Sunday and Monday are my days off, but here I am talking to you today on Sunday. <laughs> so I really don't take a lot of time off, but uh, when I do take off, I fill in time working on these projects and uh, I like it. I don't mind doing it at all. I wish I, I'm working on being more out there because I am a bit shy about being in front of the camera. That is my thing. That's my story. Um, I just, you know, I'm working on it. I'll just say that. But, um, in, in what I wish to offer to you, I do have to be out there more. So <clears throat> look for me coming, <laughs> look for me in front of a camera. All righty. So today's topic, today's topic, I had to think on this one a bit and do excuse my little bit of a scratchy voice. I've been using it a lot lately and it is Sunday morning when this is being recorded. So it's waking up a little bit slower today, <laughs> but it's here. It's such a, I guess the only thing that really should be talked about and maybe can be talked about uh, are the times that we're in and it's like almost we're in war times right now. Yes, there would be incidents when you might be a part of something in the past, whether, you know, perhaps you were in a place before where there was a shooter or something. And I don't mean a mass shooter, but, you know, we, we didn't in the past live in a world where we it was not happening or we were oblivious to it but in these times what used to be normal to go out and enjoy the weather you now have to look around you but never please do it in a paranoid or fear-filled way just well there's the topic how to navigate these times it's so much more important than ever to use your intuition even if you have no evidence as to why you feel off 
or shouldn't go somewhere. You have to do your intuition. You have to use it. You know, um, also know there's often a purpose as to why things are happening in your life where you are in a certain place. Things rarely happen by accident. Chance doesn't really occur. It is it, so, I think the closest I personally have come to chance was something I could see that heaven was trying to prevent for me. They were giving so many signs to change direction, to listen, and I chose not to, and then something happened. But it wasn't my time, so I came out of it fine. But I didn't have to go through it. I could have avoided it. And that's the thing. It's they, they will scream at you to avoid it. You can't really mess it up. The day I messed up was uh, just because I was going along with a group. And now I've learned, don't go along with the group. Listen. Just listen and honor that. And matter of fact, the whole group was upset because they all saw the signs too and didn't listen. So a whole group didn't listen. And in some way we paid a price for that. But as I said, not in a dire life-threatening way because it wasn't our time. When it is your time, it's a whole different thing. You feel differently. Um, It's divine. In this case, it is about avoiding what you don't necessarily have to be a part of. And we don't always listen to that voice. We don't, and it's a, it's a God given ability. It's, it is God given for in order for us to navigate our lives. And especially nowadays to navigate these times. And it's so important to develop your intuition and, and intuition is stronger than ever now because people are starting to use it more and are developing it. But we're usually, especially people who listen to this podcast, a very nice crowd. So often we don't want to upset someone by saying, I don't know, but I don't feel right doing that. And I don't know about, I'm well, if it's happened to me, it's probably happened to you. But I've had people call me out about it. Like, why is it that you are this way this time and you're a different way this time? because I'm using my intuition. That's why. And if it's not feeling right that moment, I'm not going to do it. And if it's feeling right in another moment, I am going to do it. And here's the thing. As far as navigating, you don't have to explain yourself. Do what's right by you. Go with your inner self. It's so important during these times to honor yourself. And understand, this is the time not to be part of the crowd. To be powerful in the individual self that you are. And to take your life one moment at a time. If you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. If you're feeling it tomorrow, you're feeling it. And you don't have to explain yourself to anyone. Now, If you want to apologize because you've let someone down, that's fine. But at the same time, don't feel sorry if it was right for you. Be kind, be courteous. But if it's right for you, it's right for you. So it's so important to honor yourself at this time, during these times and really listen to that gut and what does your spirit want and just taking care of yourself. And that's really the third thing during these times is to take care of your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual self. Those who are listening to their intuition, those who are rising and well, we're all rising. We're all sending during these times as that heaven energy is trying to come to earth. And that may mean for you that you're called to a different diet, that you're called to give up alcohol or, you know, just an example there. (laughs) Um, It doesn't mean you have to, but whatever you're called to do for yourself is right. Listen to where you're drawn. Listen 
to where you're called. If it feels right for you, do it. You know, if you feel that you have to give up sugar or you have to give up fats, listen, do it. And you don't do it because a person outside of you, unless it's, you know, this is about diagnosis and a clinical doctor, but if it's because of society that you feel you have to do something, no. This is a time where you honor and listen to your inner self. And all that you would want, all that is best for you. When I followed my spiritual path more diligently and started going towards my work, which was about 23 years ago, I just felt an overwhelming urge not to eat most forms of meat anymore. I took it one meat at a time. The only thing I occasionally eat will be seafood. And there's even times I give that up. I take a break from that because I was called to do it. And I'm not saying that's right for you. I was called to do it because in my work, I couldn't have blockages. And I found that red meat was blocking up my digestive, pork, chicken, and also the energy from those animals was blocking me up. And I had to be an open vessel in my work. And I don't find that same type of energy happens when I eat seafood. But there are times that I feel compassion for fish. And I feel, um, because it, by the way, it grew. When I gave up animals, my love for them grew. I became more empathic more compassionate. I wanted to take, I, I just, I just came into a warmth towards them more. It grew for me. And so that happens sometimes with seafood as well. It's interesting. I can eat it, but I could never fish for it. <laughs> we just, I'd be like, no, I, I cannot do it. I mean, I haven't when I was a child, but I couldn't do it nowadays. I could be like, I can't do this to you. I'll just give you up. <laughs> I just can't. If I, if I were to see a lobster, um, you know, sometimes I want to f- free lobsters from their tanks, but I love lobster. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's there, it's there on the edge of, you know, how long will that last? But I gave it up because I was called to, and it has positively impacted my work. And so what you're called to do, don't, don't use your head with it. Use your inner calling, your solar plexus area, which is your your abdomen area. The inner self, where the soul is located. Listen to that. Now, do you are you drawn to certain herbs? Are you drawn to give up chemicals in some way? You know, I you know, occasionally we eat processed food, but I really was drawn to give up give it up for the most part. And these are the times that we're living in. Well, all of us eventually will be drawn away from what is not so great for us and drawn towards what is. So these changes are natural. Now some, and I want to word this very carefully, we're all in different places as to how we're going through the change that has come to this earth. And that doesn't mean that if you, though we should never be about harming someone, if you are in the back bit of the change, it doesn't mean that the person who's in the front is better than you. You know, it. this isn't a competition. So when you, you hear someone saying, oh, they're woke, <laughs> if they want peace and no guns, or they want to... Um, they, they understand the benefit of, of cannabis for certain patients, that type of thing. Um, if they want equality, you will hear the word woke come up a lot. Um, that's just where they are in their story. Woke is good. (laughs) It's just where they are in their story. So how do you navigate these times with 
And what is the purpose of what we're going through with all the violence? There's so much violence right now. There's so much rage. Just last evening, in a place I've been before, there was a mass shooting. A place that I used to love to walk. I used to think, oh, I'm so cool walking this street. There was a mass shooting. Now there was, there was always a potential for something to occur, but not to this scale, not to this scale. It's like happening in rapid fire now, the violence, the rage. This is the rough times that we're in, where it's coming out in order to be healed. It's like rage, it has exposed itself. And the pandemic, which was divine, is divine, escalated the rage. It was a divine tool to escalate the higher five-dimensional energy coming to earth. It brought it out. It brought out our insecurities, our our rage, our, our weaknesses. And so that's why the violence has gone up. That's why mental illness is more prevalent, I feel, in the public setting. It's because of the the times and the exposure of it, the unmasking. In order for it to be healed, it has to be exposed. And it will go through cycles. I was saying last night, and some of you listen to this podcast, I was actually at that event last night. I was saying last night that the mass shootings will keep occurring until action is taken The because it cycles and the cycles will keep occurring until we heal it. That is why there is a cycle happening right now of people wanting to return to the past. They want to revisit the 1800s or the 1950s. Because it, even the 1920s, because it wasn't healed completely. It wasn't addressed completely. There's still scars that need to be healed. Healing that needs to take place. So until it is healed completely, it must be revisited. It must come up. But that doesn't mean you allow it to happen. It doesn't mean you just give up your rights or allow violence or allow white nationalism to grow. And we're in times as we were in the past. White nationalism was there in the 1800s. It was there in the 1930s. It is really prevalent now because it was not healed enough completely. So understand that you're in a bit of a war zone right now because of that healing that needs to take place. And you are also, whoever is listening to this, is going through healing too. Notice your rage. Notice your sadness. Notice depression. That is your soul, your spirit telling you what needs to heal. And it's so important to make that time to heal yourself. This is really a time of necessary self-care. You have to put yourself first. Before all others, before anyone, before children, before spouses, before parents, you have to put yourself first. You have to take care of your mental, emotional, and spiritual health, and your physical health will benefit too when you do the first three. But yes, of course, look to your body, and you know what you need to do. As I said, you will be told. You will be called of what is necessary to take care of yourself. These are the times. Go where led. Listen to your gut. Try not to live in fear. I was in a movie theater not that long ago, maybe now about two weeks ago. I automatically look for the exits, not because of fire. I look because... In case someone comes in with a firearm, I want to know where's my escape. But I still watched that movie and got into that movie and ate my popcorn and did not live in fear. 
But it's natural to have more awareness. It's natural to know that that is now something that can occur. But we shouldn't live in fear. Just trust in your gut. Trust in that awareness. Trust in how you're feeling. If you don't feel a peace, a closure, a surrender, then you're meant to be here. And you can happily be here. Go towards the happiness. What feeds your spirit? What makes you feel joy? Is it time with friends? Is it music? Is it travel? Whatever it is, it's imperative. And don't use the excuse of, but I don't have the money. So many people talking about gas prices. So many. Food, affordability, understandably, but what you focus on will expand. So the more you focus on how expensive gas is, the higher gas prices go. The more you focus on food availability, the worse it gets. I filled up my tank a week ago. It was a $20 more to fill it up. I was grateful I could do it. Live in a state of gratitude. Even if, though it is more expensive now, live in a state of whatever you can pull off. A state of gratitude for food, for gas, for friends, even if you're making changes. Be in a state of gratitude about what you're pulling off. It will surround your environment in more harmony. It will help things to line up for you. It will just help you to navigate the path of your life so much better. Gratitude. Milk it, milk it, milk it. I get up on a weekday morning and I spend two minutes focusing on what to be grateful for. And I'll find anything. The roof over my head, breakfast, some event coming up I'm excited about, anything, a lesson that I learned, anything I can grab towards. I'm spending two minutes doing it because it starts my day out in a powerful and positive way and when you start out in a powerful and positive way your whole day is going to get better and you're going to manifest more of what you want rather than what you don't want when you get yourself into a state of blaming your life on others or noticing what you don't like you're just asking for more of that more reasons to blame and more reasons to not to not like things in your life. The times that we're going through will change. The gas prices will go down. We are incorporating more means of transportation anyway. No, there is not a conspiracy theory to do that. <laughs> okay, I've heard that before. That's why. And I don't mean to... I'm not really laughing at it. I I happen to be one who smiles loudly. Um, but there isn't, no one is, no one has enough power to get you to buy an electric car because gas prices are high. Gas prices are high because of greed. And that's the only reason. And so... There will always be a time when consumption is less, gas gas prices have to go down, right? And we're still transferring, still transitioning in to other ways of transportation. So it's a process. So gas has to be here for now, right? Food supplies will straighten themselves out, and they will, actually in the scheme of things, shortly. Food prices will as well. It is a fallout it is just a fallout from that divine tool of the pandemic and it will turn itself around just as things have turned themselves around before but notice people are growing more they're growing more gardens now than they did they're finding alternatives 
that was how it was supposed to be. Everything that happens, there's a bigger picture going on. There's a divine element in place. And that's amazing. That's wonderful. So keep that in mind. There is no one person to blame. There's no one to blame, actually. These times have an element of divinity to them. There is a purpose. Navigate it, taking care of yourself first and foremost. Doing what you can. It's rough. But most of us are meant to get through it. And to go on to better times. And greater energy. Do you know you signed up for these times as I did? I think when we signed up for it, we didn't realize at times it would be so hard. <laughs> would it? That there would be such sadness and such fear and such trauma. Because we're, when we sign up for it, we're not in our human selves. We're in our divine selves. And then our human selves arrive. And there's a whole different drama involved. It's much more intense. So it's so imperative that you take care of yourself during this intensity. And it may at times get worse before it gets better. But once again, you have to do what's called and you have to be no nonsense about it. Stop worrying about what other people think. It's about you. And that's another thing. Everybody now, because of the energy within their body, and because it's so intense to have your personal story now, you can have a conversation with someone that you are both going to see the same thing in different ways. It's just an interesting time. It is so important to understand it's just not worth it sometimes to continue the conversation. It's probably not even worth it sometimes to start the conversation with someone. Though communication is important, if you feel you're not on the same page, just bail. <laughs> just bail. Because it is better to have peace than to be involved in a conversation where you cannot come to an agreement. Just bail. But with in spite, always go towards harmony. Always go towards peace. Always as well, plan an inner plan for yourself. Create an inner plan. Make a decision. What is right for me, not only in this moment, but for my life? Sometimes we want people to join us on our journey. We want to be around like tribes or like minds. And yes, that is good to do. That is good to do. But sometimes the person that used to be of like mind is not of like mind anymore. And that's all right. I will tell you. Yes, find people who are aligned with you. Be of like mind, but also make sure it's positive. Because remember, what you put out, you get back. So it's not a good idea to join a group that's about complaining or negativity in any way. Because you're just going to grow that. It's going to bloom. It's going to flower. Be around people who are fun, who have the intentions of living a full life, who are, you know, if you are spiritual, who are spiritual people in a positive way, you know, people who are help you to have a positive life experience, who, um, who support you, who are kind. That's so important right now. For me personally, I'm drawn to people who can get me out of the house, who can help me to not just work and have no play, 
but that want to have that freedom to enjoy new experiences and don't and make it work and make it happen and don't say I can't or I won't I don't like hearing that there's always where there's a will there's a way and I'm drawn to people who are spiritual who want to talk not about others but want to talk about how to manifest and you know exciting things <laughs> how to to grow ourselves as the unlimited beings that we are so you may see that you are pulled into relationship changes that those who perhaps were your squad you're not feeling are your squad so much anymore and that's all right you can't make people change to stay with you, to follow you, to be aligned with you. It doesn't mean you have to let them go. It just means that it's all right to expand. It's all right to expand your squad, your posse, your group. These are times when people are doing that. But we have to make sure that we're not expanding it to people that will cause us to attract what we don't want to attract. People blaming others or believing things that aren't necessarily true. So keep that group around you positive and supportive and free. Makes you feel free, allows them to be free. That's so important right now, so important to surround yourself with the positive like minds that will help you to navigate these times so much because what you don't understand another one may and so it's helpful it's helpful to have people to, that are looking out for each other and we all all of us are one by the way what happens to one happens to all of us whether we're impacted by it emotionally, mentally, or spiritually or not, we're still impacted. It still ripples into our life. So that's why it's so important to be positive, to feel positive, to care, to serve others. And that's what that heavenly energy would say to you. How can you serve all the children of the world? And that includes all of us and that children of the world. How can you serve? What can you do to make a difference? These are the times that we live in where we're supposed to find that, where we are in the process of finding that, where we are understanding that we are all one. And when we help another, we're helping ourselves. So that's so important too. But that doesn't mean you put them before you because you can't serve without a full tank. So during these times, develop that intuition. Take care of your spirit. Meditate. Exercise. Eat what you're called to eat. Surround yourself with people that make you feel good that are supportive, that are kind, that are positive in every way with their mindsets and with their feelings. And be informed. Be introspective. Don't assume that this is going on or that are going on. Try to see that big picture. Because there's always a big picture going on. There's always a purpose to everything. And when you can tap in and get that, it just makes life less fearful because you can say, okay, I, I'm getting it. So it's not, even though it may impact me and it may make me sad or it might make me angry, but not as much as it would have because I can understand there's something larger going on and gratitude Milk the gratitude, please. Oh, so anything, anything small. The f Where I am today, it's a beautiful day. Milk that. Thank you for the beautiful day. 
Thank you for the opportunity to have some free time today. Thank you for the eyeglasses I wear or the clothes that I wear or the fact I have a roof under my head. Thank you for my car, even if it isn't the car I ultimately want. It's still a way for me to get around. Thank you for the, any gas that I can afford. Thank you for the food that goes into my body. Milk it, milk it, milk it. And you will find that it multiplies and you have more to be grateful for. And then you're rolling with the changes. You're just rolling along with the changes. Much, much easier. Thank you so much for joining me on this Sunday. I appreciate all of you so very much. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. In every way, even on Facebook, please share because I do post it on my page there too. And if you have any suggestions for topics I'm willing to consider, um, please feel free to email me at serenityharbor at verizon.net. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful week. And... Know that you have the energy, the spirit, the strength to get through these times. And I wish you many blessings. Thank you.